Hey everyone, welcome to Pit Stops the Podium, the Red Partners podcast where we talk to execs who competed and won, taking their companies from high growth to high scale. My name is Brendan Tolleson. I serve as the co-founder and CEO of Red Partners, and I'm delighted to have with me today, Brian Honigman for this episode of Pit Stops to Podium. Welcome, Brian. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I, I pronounced your name probably 10 times before this, and hopefully I got it somewhat You got close. it perfect. Oh, you got it you. perfect. Uh, you know, it's uh, <laughs> made it the eight years of German I took for the Han. I, I was able to get that in there, so I, I appreciate that. Uh, for folks that may not be familiar with Brian, Brian, you serve um, as a marketing strategy consultant at Honigman Media. Um, and I'd love to give you the opportunity to share a little bit about what your company does, uh, but also the origin story. I think it's really important for our audience to have context of How do our guests get to where they're at? Because I think that gives you the platform to speak into some of these topics that we'll get into later uh, in the show. Cool. Yeah. Uh, So I'm a marketing consultant, primarily focused on uh, helping companies with their marketing strategies. I uh, work with all kinds of organizations of all sizes, but most often uh, I support uh, nonprofits, uh, tech companies, and media brands in delivering results with their social media, content marketing, and then, you know, as broad as just their digital marketing efforts uh, overall. Those are probably like the three key focuses. How do I actually like provide support through consulting projects where I'm like uh, um, an outside partner helping them get to their desired goals? I do career coaching for marketers. I do professional trainings for companies. um, And primarily just really build out their marketing strategies and deliver it in multiple formats. You know, I'm really doing the same work, whether I'm coaching, consulting, or training, it's just delivered delivered in a different way. Um, I also teach uh, at a variety of uh, universities and uh, learning platforms, like uh, I'm an instructor for LinkedIn Learning. Uh, I'm a uh, program leader for Kellogg Business School at Northwestern. Um, so it's all marketing all the time. Um, And I think what's unique about my approach as a business is that I have a really um, uh, interesting purview into how marketing works across different verticals, different company sizes for different marketing leaders. And I'm able to apply those lessons to uh, many different circumstances. For example, working with a nonprofit, I can see some trend that they're uh, focusing on that could possibly work for my corporate client or I'm working with a government agency and I can help them um, you know, act like, uh, you know, a corporate entity with their use of XYZ channel. So that's been, uh, over the years, I've kind of figured out as kind of what one of my sweet spots is. Um, so this would be 10 years of self-employment as a consultant this year. Um, I, a quick background, I worked at a variety of companies, an agency, a small magazine, a startup. I worked at the fashion conglomerate, now failed, uh, Mark Echo. Um, and I just quickly, through doing marketing at all those different uh, companies, I quickly grew impatient with the quote-unquote typical uh, corporate ladder, the the leadership ladder you have to climb to take on the kinds of projects and opportunities that you want. Um, So after doing that for a few years, I kind of went off on my own and tried my own thing. And it's been working ever since. So this hasn't always worked smoothly or perfectly. It's a lot of bumps along the way. Um, so for example, just, you know, not a bump, but I primarily started off as a freelance writer, writing about marketing and slowly, uh, pivoted to, you know, fully into the consulting, coaching, um, and teaching work. Um, so it's, it's looked pretty different over the 10 years, but, uh, wouldn't take it back for anything. It's been, uh, really rewarding. That's great. Well, you know, good for you for kind of finding that path as a, I'm sure at the time was a, you know, solo, solo, solo entrepreneur or solo, solo, I can never say that word. Solo, solo, <laughs> solo I still can't do it. Um, but I think you know what I'm saying. So, uh, it's always, a solo business owner. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It, it's always fun to hear the origin story, uh, and just the experience. Um, and so you bring a depth as it relates to, uh, longevity, but also as you talked about, um, experience and how you take, you know, best practices or principles that you are learning in one, you know, segment like nonprofit applying into for profit and vice versa. Um, I think it's always one of those fun things that those, those things are universally applicable. Um, 
Uh, so it's, it's, it's interesting to see how that can be applied. So uh, before we get into some of uh, marketing, because that's what your focus is, uh, we do have a tradition here at Pit Stops at Podium, and that's to get to know um, our guests outside of work. And uh, I mean, you already mentioned one. Look, not many of our guests are also adjunct professors. So that's pretty cool. But um, what, what are those passions, hobbies, interests that uh, our audience should know about you? Um, something kind of different from the typical, uh, marketing focus. Uh, one of my biggest interests is drag, drag queens, kings, the whole drag culture. It's like one of the, um, you, you know, when we first started talking, you asked me, I'm, I'm located in Philadelphia and you're like, Oh, do you follow Philly sports? Cause like, yeah. you know, we've been had a good time with the Eagles and the Phillies recently. Um, and I said, no, I don't, but the sport I follow basically is all things drag related. Uh, it's basically, you know, entertainers, trans, non-binary, queer entertainers um, doing all different kinds of comedy acts, lip syncing, um, cabaret. They're on Broadway now, um, uh, singers, and it's a really interesting uh, art form that I've, you know, been obsessed with for years and years. Um, and honestly, there's a lot of marketing lessons I've learned from watching. Uh, you know, it's kind of like the entertainment. It's an, if I had to put it in an industry, it's in the entertainment industry. And uh, over my interest was sparked from the reality TV show RuPaul's Drag Race. And over the years, it's got more and more and more popular as, as drag culture has become more mainstream and less on the fringe. And it's been interesting to see the contestants that go on this reality show and all the different things they've done to gain fame and uh, work and gain popularity to you know, more deals, get, uh, you know, Instagram brand deals, commercials, a movie deal, uh, you know, be part of a Broadway show, get their own music videos, whatever. Um, and it's been interesting to watch this very unique subset of the entertainment space and what these individuals have done to market themselves. So that's always, I'm always thinking marketing all the time. Um, typically more so the creative side of things. I'm not thinking about like, data and analytics related to marketing on my off time, but uh, always paying attention to uh, little trends you kind of pick up from your interest, your interests that don't necessarily relate to the, you know, traditional like marketing strategy. Yeah. Um, so that's something uh, that people that know me outside of professional life know that it's a big interest of mine. That's great. Well, I appreciate you sharing a little bit about um, who you are and what you enjoy, what you're passionate about. I think that's always uh, good to create that connection because we are human beings uh, and not just human doers. And um, so, so that's always interesting. And uh, to your point, like it's hard not to take your lens from a professional perspective and apply it into the things that you're passionate about. It's just natural for that to happen uh, and mm-hmm. uh, the opportunities. Uh, so that's, that's really cool. Um, well, let, let's get into a little bit about your expertise. And so, you know, we talked at the beginning about what you do and uh, really having that creative marketing lens. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, if you think about like dark funnel or just even kind of social and how people think through marketing, um, uh, social is kind of that next frontier, right? And there are different distribution channels. But, um, you know, for a lot of our audience, we're trying to understand how do I approach the trends with social media? to grow my business. And uh, so I think that would be a really relevant topic for our audience. Um, And just to kind of set that stage, just kind of the overarching meta narrative, uh, when you think about social, um, what should our audience be aware of that says, hey, like I, this is no longer just an interesting platform, but this is an area where I really need to invest my time and and, and my dollars uh, into. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's all... Social media in particular, I guess marketing in general, but with the social media hat on, we want to just pay attention to where the attention is shifting at any one moment. Uh, It's always going to shift between channels. It's not going to be TikTok and Instagram forever or YouTube. It's always going to evolve and change. Right now, a lot of attention or consumer attention is like on places like TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, probably the top three. Um, And why they are important channels to be on because people spend time there and there's lots of opportunities to educate, entertain, um, signal your values on these platforms. And one of the ways to kind of um, break through the noise and gain some uh, viewership, uh, especially from folks that may not know about your company or um, haven't engaged with you before is participating in trends. Trends are... um, very popular on TikTok in, in particular, but tr- trends on social media are, are patterns that 
uh, patterns and activity that either, you know, consumers are participating in or a bunch of brands are participating in. And there's kind of a ongoing conversation around a particular trend. Uh, so for example, uh, on TikTok, um, people will participate in uh, a trending challenges or use like trending filters or trending uh, sounds in all of their TikToks. Um, and there's opportunities for brands to participate in a relevant way that gives them a boost of visibility because this is where the conversation is. You add your kind of input to the conversation and ideally bring some people into, you know, your circle. Uh, I will say before going, you know, too uh, much further is that uh, I often think right now, especially as like TikTok is uh, quote unquote, a little bit more mature and like very known as like an important focus for um, many organizations, especially social media wise, is that you don't want to be overly reliant on trends. A lot of businesses are like, okay, cool. This is the trend of the moment. Let's hop on that one and the next one and the next one and the next one. And um, that's the quickest way to like lose your perspective, lose like your, the focus on your goals as an um, organization and kind of blend in. So it can actually have the opposite effect. Like you just kind of blend in and seem like every other organization participating in XYZ trend. So my recommendation is to take a look at whatever the trend may be, you know, whether it's, you know, um, um, the Barbie movie, uh, was, uh, recently announced, uh, the trailer for it. And they, on Instagram released this, like, uh, images of the different actors, um, in the movie and had their, like this, like Barbie emblem behind them and like named them like beach Barbie, swimmer Barbie, whatever. And, uh, because Barbie is an iconic American brand and because of this, like framing of this Instagram content, so many just consumers copied this framework, this Instagram kind of template and would post like, I'm, you know, PR Barbie, I'm drag race fan Barbie or whatever it is and added their own kind of spin to it. So brands could decide to chime in or not as well. Um, so basically when you see a trend like that, you want to say, does it make sense for us to chime in here? Is there something relevant to say? It doesn't always need to be something profound or quote unquote thought leadership, but it's like, is there an interesting way for us to participate here? Uh, does it tie back to us in some capacity? How do we make it make sense for us? If the answer is no, it doesn't make sense or it's yeah. not relevant to our audience. And it's like, it's a total pass. Um, but basically the, the best way to do it is to see what trends are happening at any one point in time across the internet in general, but on a, you know, channel basis across social media and pinpoint what's relevant to your organization um, sparingly. You don't want to over overdo it because you need to create your own content and start your own conversations too across social yeah. media and just like your marketing channels as well. Yeah, it's kind of that whole proactive versus reactive. You don't you don't want to miss out on the trends, but you also don't want to be reliant on the trends. You want to create the trends. Um, and, yes, ideally. And uh you know, I think for some of our audience, you know, they may say, hey, that's that's great, Brian. That might work for the nonprofit or for B2C where you're dealing with consume, like individuals that are buying your uh, product or, or donating to your cause. Uh, but for those B2B companies, um, does that same principle apply? Absolutely. I just think you have to try harder and think um, a little more critically. There's fewer trends to hop on. Um, because there's like a more kind of serious nature to B2B because we're trying to, um, again, we're still trying to reach people, but in a more professional scenario as opposed to driving attention to the Barbie movie or a coffee brand, which is a lot more low key. Um, I would say paying attention uh, in particular when it comes to social media, paying attention to what conversations are trending on LinkedIn. And saying, hmm, where do we have an opportunity here to join the discussion? So let's say there's a debate about salary transparency. If that's something that you particularly stand behind as a, an organization or, you know, you have salary transparency across, across your teams, perfect time to, unless you, you know, have just recently, you know, made, uh, you know, a stance on the issue. It's a great time to, to join in and say, add your perspective. It's all about adding perspective. Um, your unique perspective um, and join the conversation because you have something to say. So honestly, the same principles apply. Uh, it's just thinking about 
where are you looking for trends, which ones are appropriate. And there's just, um, takes a little bit more effort because there's fewer trends to kind of pick from in a sense. Um, and you have to get a little bit more creative in some ways. I'm not saying B2C marketing is easy. B2C marketing can be really challenging. Um, but sometimes there's, it feels like kind of creatively there's more options to choose from and think and discussions to chime in on. Um, so it's just about thinking about it a little bit differently. So my, my recommendation there would be to look at LinkedIn and see where you can hop in there. I think it's great. Uh, I like that. I, I like how you have recommendations for each one of your um, ideas. That's, that's good. Um, let's talk through. Uh, all right. So let's, talk, Hey, I, I am listening to this. I am a, uh, you've convinced me. I'm a believer that I need to focus on uh, trends um, and not, let's say I want to create, like, I want to create that movement on a trend. All right. So how, like, how do you break through the noise? To your point, like B2C or B2B, there's a lot of noise out there. And so how do you break through that noise to really have a differentiated uh, message or tone, uh, whatever it may be, edutainment, like education plus entertainment, like what, what have you seen be effective um, for those that are doing it well? Um, so, you know, before you even get to this point of like looking for trend and seeing where it tends to, where it makes sense to hop in or ignore, uh, or let it pass by, um, and, and, and not to, it, it, they don't even need to be, um, you know, crazy extensive per se, but just having uh, a core set of values as an organization some key tenants, if you will, uh, like having a clear uh, understanding of what your mission is besides making money and hiring people and, and employing people, which are completely valid reasons to exist as a business. But you need some other tangible um, reason why you exist in the market. And by clarifying that first, that's the lens in which you're able to say, is this trend to make sense for us or not? Um, so going back to that LinkedIn example, it's like uh, if you're uh, a company that's really known for your uh, employer brand, like you are really an advocate for, you know, um, quote unquote, more liberal um, uh, employment practices like, you know, salary transparency or um, you offer all kinds of benefits for a uh, beyond the traditional best practices for benefits, those can tie back that to me, it sounds like some of their key values of this, this company that they really want to be employee first and they're taking actions that match their marketing. So that's, that's the, the key thing here is like having a core set of values and it doesn't have to be like hippy dippy or, uh, you know, super, it doesn't always need to go back to like protecting the environment or something like that, but you just have to have, some reason in which, you know, why do you have a unique perspective in the market? That's the lens in which you pick these different uh, trends to communicate on. Uh, real quick example, um, uh, Dove, uh, Dove brand, the brand Dove, which is like soaps and shampoos and what have you. Over the last, I don't know, a decade maybe, they've been really pushing like uh, the focus on real beauty, finding inner beauty, not worrying about facades and all that, but um, focusing on um, women's self-esteem and they've taken, and that's like the brand positioning of their soap and body care products versus the other 400 that are out there. And they've gone all the way in and taking action and um, uh, messaging around the subject matter. And that's kind of one of their core value sets. And they do this with their own messaging that they're proactively putting out. And they do this by reacting to trends and, putting their spin on it. So two quick examples, and then we'll be done with Dove, I promise. Um, the first is um, there was that uh, beauty filter on TikTok recently that was, um, you know, made you quote unquote, more conventionally attractive by Western standards. That's basically what this little beauty filter on TikTok did. And there was a lot of discussion about it. It was trending. It was widely used. There was pushback about it. And Dove chimed in because they're talking about self-esteem and body image and all these uh, subjects for years and years and years. And they chimed in and said, we disagree with these filters. We, we disagree with these, you know, TikTok or Snapchat lenses. We don't think they're productive. They make people feel about themselves. So they push back on a trend. And then similarly, they helped uh, support uh, legislation uh, around, um, 
uh, social media and how it's impacting uh, young people and people's self-esteem. And uh, so just trying to give you examples of kind of things that they're messaging and then also actively doing in the real world beyond just saying we care about this, but taking action to make some kind of change on the subject matter. So long, long answer to you just need to have some kind of perspective and value values that you're building from. And then you know how to leverage trends effectively. Yeah. I think what you're, you're describing, like you need to have a lens by which informs what you engage, what you say yes to and what you say no to. And, and the things that you say yes to become that platform by informing. And then it kind of forms like, well, then you had to think through, okay, what, what are the tactics and strategies that I need to employ to create that um, awareness, that influence, whatever word you want to use to be relevant in that discussion. Totally. Yeah. It's all about re- relevancy. Like it wouldn't make sense if the very first thing Dove chimed in on was that beauty filter and they had no years and years and years of backstory on self-esteem. It would be like, okay, why do I care what, what a soap product says about my self-esteem? People still might feel that way today, even after years and years and years and years, but they've done that like, preliminary uh, legwork so when they do chime in it feels relevant and like purposeful not just like chiming in to get more views you know and that's never really yeah. how we want to come across well i think that's a really interesting point that is relevant when we talked earlier about there's relevancy regardless of uh whether you're b2c b2b nonprofit, for profit um but there's this element and like take the dub example of can like you're when by taking a product and then, you know, tying it to something like self-esteem, there becomes an emotive connection. Um, and it's goes much beyond, it goes much further beyond just associating it with soap. Um, and so it's, uh, it's really powerful. It's a way to that whole influence concept and get people to buy into a brand and believe in the brand. Um, because to your point, there are, I'm sure there are thousands of soaps out there. Um, but Dove is, is a category yeah. leader be- not just because of that, but it certainly, if you probably looked at their growth, there's a, there is a correlation, whether it's causation, but there's a correlation between the self-esteem initiative that they rolled out um, and, and the, the growth they've had over the last 10 years. Yeah, totally. Um, you know, they were already a powerhouse. I don't know if they're Unilever or Procter & Gamble, one of the two giants, but this you know, approach, which I don't know exact, exact, the exact year in which they started it, has helped them ensure they maintain relevancy, and especially in when these in these conversation based channels that have you know come to popularity like social media over the last decade and change, um, because their previous marketing probably wouldn't work now in the same way. I'm sure they still do traditional, you know, our soap makes your hair smoother and all that kind of like the benefits focused stuff. But there needs to be more of a perspective, and I think that's a, a big takeaway there. Yeah, um, I think one of the interesting, yeah. as, we, as we wrap up and thinking into the B two B lens, and you mentioned LinkedIn. Uh, you know, it's been interesting too. Is that I think there, you know, there's the I think there's always like B two C is always ahead of B two B, and you're starting to see B two B starting to realize, okay, we need to change the, our approach. Um, and this whole concept of, of like a point of view, um, and not just having stale, stagnant content. I think a lot of marketers just say, "Oh, LinkedIn is just a great way to post our." Inform- like it just becomes information um, and it's really white noise um, and people really care about having that point of view. Is there any, any um, recommendations that you would give to folks that are maybe, maybe LinkedIn is their platform and not a tick. I mean, they should be looking at TikTok and YouTube, but let's say they're not yet like, Hey, baby steps. Let's start with LinkedIn. Um, like what are, what's some recommendations, tips that you would have that say, Hey, marketer, revenue leader, um, as you want to build your brand, you want to build influence and awareness, uh, here are ways to break through that noise and start to create that point of view that you may not have exercised to date. Sure. Uh, so LinkedIn is still kind of, it's been around for a long time, but in terms of, uh, being utilized as a marketing platform that still feels wild, wild west. Like there's a lot more opportunity than there are on very, than there is on very saturated platforms like Instagram and TikTok again, because of that B2C push probably. Um, and there's a lot of creators on those other platforms. Um, two things come to mind is, um, you know, as you mentioned, it's often a place where individuals post, I just got hired or I'm looking for a job or can, you know, 
let's give congrats and kudos to someone that has overcome a career milestone. It's a lot of individuals. How can you adapt those common or, you know, the list is longer than that, but the common use cases of LinkedIn as a company and chime in with your own perspective. So like, there's always like congra- congratulatory moments across LinkedIn with amongst individuals. How does a company leverage that? How does the company uh, chime in and like poke commentary at, on those like moments we're all familiar with? And that's a, a, that's a big thing is um, commenting on the the familiar habits of a LinkedIn cha- uh, of a social network, and in this case, LinkedIn. And having your own spin on it or commentary or pushback to a, a, a common habits on a channel. Uh, for example, I'm, I'm starting to see uh, for a long time kind of how, you know how there's a larger conversation around perfectionism on Instagram and how it's kind of harmful for the average person. I've seen that over the last few years spill out on it, onto LinkedIn as well of like, my career is perfect. Like, look at all my accolades, not talking about the the failures or the bumps along the way. I'm certainly um, playing into that as well. Sometimes I don't want to like who who wants to quote unquote look bad (laughs) as a professional. There's a lot more value to, or a lot more risk on a channel like LinkedIn, but um, that could be an interesting uh, vantage point for a company to provide commentary on uh, from a uh, marketing standpoint, talking about embracing failures or what have you. Um, so again, like paying attention to the overarching like use cases and, and in common happenstance on a network, and then how do we discuss the familiar but add our spin to it, change the conversation or move it to the next logical step. Um, and then unrelated to those, um, LinkedIn creators, I would say, are still way underutilized. There are hundreds, maybe thousands of folks on all different topics from graphic design to leadership that are regularly publishing on LinkedIn to large engaged audiences interested in learning um, from them. And there's a lot of different opportunities for brands to partner up and get in front of those audiences in um, interesting ways and in in relevant ways. Um, Yeah, I think there's a real big untapped uh, opportunity with LinkedIn creators for sure. And there's one for every professional um, topic under the sun at this point. Um, yeah. Uh, if you want, you know, more, go oh, ahead. No, I was going to say it's a good segue, which is uh, generally as we wrap up, we, we kind of ask, hey, what's a next step they can take? And I know you've got, um, you know, you mentioned earlier LinkedIn in terms of content, but what will be a, you know, what's the next step a, so our audience can take to engage with you and to learn more about, uh, your perspective, your content, or if they said, hey, I'd love to partner with you going forward. Thanks. I appreciate it. Um, so a natural next, next step is I have a course on LinkedIn, on LinkedIn's education platform, e-learning platform called LinkedIn Learning. It's a course called Social Media Trends. It's a, a self-paced audio course where I talk about important trends that matter and kind of break down what the trend is and why it's useful and hopefully helping you make a quicker decision as, as, uh, as to whether it's relevant to your organization to focus on or not. Um, so you can check that out on LinkedIn learning, uh, to date it's had over a hundred thousand, uh, students take the course and it's updated, uh, frequently. So we make sure to, you know, get rid of trends that are no longer relevant anymore and don't have that staying power. And then I'm always adding, um, new material because this is an always uh, evolving space. So definitely uh, check that course out. There's a lot of great ideas to to get you thinking about uh, how to take part in trends. That's great. Well, one of the things I appreciate about your perspective, Brian, is it's not just ideas, but they're frameworks and um, recommendations. Um, And that always makes it easier for our audience to apply. Uh, So thank you for, for answering in a thoughtful manner by which it really, I think it's helpful as opposed to just informative. Um, so, Hey, really do appreciate the time. I know our audience is going to benefit from this. It, if you didn't hear that sign up for his course on LinkedIn, uh, it's going to be great content on, if you're interested in learning more about trends and then Brian, if anyone wants to work with Brian, uh, follow him on LinkedIn and I'm sure you can figure out how to engage with this company from here. So Brian, thanks so much for the time. We really do appreciate it. It's been great. Thanks so much for the great questions. Appreciate it.